newcomers who did not attend our last Friday <coughs> discussion. We are talking about <coughs> the declining of mankind according to the one of the discourses of the Buddha, what he has mentioned and pointed out <coughs> what are the reasons and who are responsible. Because when there are certain evil things or bad things, very unfortunate uh, situations arise, then calamities, we always blame somebody else. That is our nature. Either God or devil or ghost, if not some others, we think they are responsible for our problems. <coughs> but we are not ready to admit that we also contribute something, directly or indirectly. Every living being contributes something, either for the progress or as well as the deterioration or decline of the mankind and the world. When things are bad, when immoral and wicked and cruel things have become very common, what we say, well, what to do, world is like this. We blame the world. And what is this world that we refer? We are referring to ourselves. We should have mentioned we are like this. No, the world is like this. What to do? We are like this. That means we are not honest, we are selfish, we are very cunning. And this attitude creates a lot of problems and difficulties. If we are honest, kind and understanding, we never face these problems. Then you can ask, right, we try to be honest and kind, but others always come and disturb us. But here the Buddha's explanation is for the whole mankind, not only for one particular group. No doubt there are some innocent people, kind-hearted people, understanding people who try to be good or try to do good or try to lead a religious life. But on the other hand, there are so many who never appreciate this way of life and they naturally disturb us. So what will happen when they disturb us, we are also trying to be like them. Because we create the idea that what is the use of extending our kindness or honesty or cooperation or harmony towards others if others disturb us. So you also decide to behave like them. Now that is the problem. Now that is the difficulty for us to maintain good qualities and the virtues. Again, there are so many other worldly conditions which are not in our favor. We must understand this also. 
the formations or the situations of this world is not in our favor. Remember this. We like to gain everything what we need. We try to get rid of everything what we don't like. But never happen. This is the nature of the world. The formations of the world is like this. Now let us take climate, sun or the heat, wind, rain. These things support one section of the mankind disturb another section. Some people blame and accuse heat. Some others say we need, we are waiting for the heat because they want to make use of that heat. Some people are waiting for the wind but others hate wind. We don't like wind, very bad for our health. And some people need rain. Others Heat, the rain disturbed their way of life and thing. And this is the nature of the world. People are also like this. Some are cooperative, understanding, honest. Others are very stubborn, very cunning, very cruel, and very selfish. All our problems, unhappiness, complaints are due to this uh, disharmony, disagreement. Humans and humans and humans and other living beings and visible and invisible living beings Climate, beside all these things there are some other unknown forces which are known as worldly conditions, situation. And we cannot understand why. Since our knowledge or understanding is very poor, what we do? We always refer either to God, if not devil or ghost, then charm and black magic. Now this is our definition. But we never think that our uh, definition or decision that we have made, all these troubles are due to this or that, is a lack of understanding, based on lack of understanding. If we can understand the nature of life, the nature of the world, the nature of the universe, the nature of worldly conditions, we never blame or accuse God or devil or charms or black magic because we can understand where the mistake is. So our knowledge is very, very poor. Always we create our own imaginations. Here the Buddha is trying to clarify to explain, to wipe out certain misunderstanding, imaginations that many people create in their mind regarding our way of life. The other day I have already explained when people are virtuous, honest and kind, 
contemplate on the nature of life and the nature of the omissions of this physical body and the mind. They could manage to lead a peaceful life. To avoid so many misunderstanding, jealousy and enmity, argument and many other unfortunate situations. So when they have neglected that way of life, when they have become crazy only for sensual indulgence, pleasure, when they develop their selfishness by disregarding others' way of life, uh, trouble started from there. I think you have heard in another important discourse how the Buddha has explained the origin of human life on this earth and how the sicknesses, old age, death and the calamities, enmity and jealousy and anger started and what are the causes. It is very interesting. Now, when you study the other religions, what they say about the beginning and the origin or the creation of the world and the life, they say, God created at once the world and the life and everything. So at the beginning, the human beings that the God created, man and woman, were very good, very innocent, not bad, no, cannot find any immoral or wicked or selfish idea. Later, devil appeared and created temptation in the man's mind. And what is temptation? Temptation means craving. And because of this craving or temptation, man or human beings started to commit evil, bad things, wicked things. Then went on developing, developing, developing. Uh, this is their interpretation. So when we refer to the Buddha, what he has said, he never used the word that God created. He never accepted that. What he says, living beings exist in this universe in various other planets, in different forms. So this is not the only world where living beings exist in this universe. Not only universe, universes. We say only universe. It is wrong. Universes. Infinite. There is neither beginning nor an end. Uh, this is the nature of the universe. That is why he says, there are thousands of suns and thousands of moons. So people could not understand in those days why he says like this. And today, astronomers have found out Yes, there are so many suns, so many moons, by using their telescope. But how far they can examine, 
only a short distance. Uh, here you can understand what the Buddha has said, why the universe is infinite and again system where there are living beings. But that is not the end. He referred to various other planets where there are living beings. They are not human beings. In the air also there are living beings, but we cannot see them through our naked eyes. So, what happened? This I have already explained. The world where we live is not permanent. You cannot find any permanent, everlasting world system in any part of the universe. They exist, they remain, they decay and disappear. After some time reappear, all the dispersed particles and energies and gravity and magnetic power, thousands and so many known and unknown energies are supported for them to join, combine together. Then the formation again takes place. Then going on developing and developing and developing, uh, then the life started to develop. Again going on developing, developing, decaying, decaying, decaying and disappearing. Uh, this is the nature of the whole universe. Now we can see so many galaxies. In one galaxy there are millions of stars. They always appear and disappear. Some are still developing and developing and developing, and some are decaying, decaying, decaying. And this is the nature of a world system. So they were not created by anybody. Just because they cannot understand how the formation takes place, now they say there is somebody to create all them. So, first human being, how they appeared. Those devas and brahmas or other living beings who exist in other planets in this universe, two of them, for curiosity's sake, they wanted to see what this, this small glow. Just like those who have landed on the moon, exactly like this, they came down. After that, they had psychic power, miraculous power, some sort of supernatural power. Devas and Brahmas have this worldly power. By using their supernatural power, they have come down to this earth. Then they smell very tempting aroma. Then they wanted to taste and taste what it is. Formerly they have controlled their craving, anger, jealousy and so many weaknesses they have control. That is the nature of their life in that particular planet. But after coming down, experiencing this temptation, hidden craving, temptation arrives. Then they wanted to test. After testing, they found out the very tasty. They never had this kind of taste in their life. Now that is the beginning of the development of craving in the man's mind. Now here the difference you can see, Buddhism and other religion. To others there must be a devil to create that temptation. Without devil there is nobody to create this. 
And the Buddha said, it is not that devil who created the temptation. Those devas and brahmas who experience their peaceful life, who have subdued, controlled their craving, because of the circumstances arouse them. Circumstances always arouse our hidden feeling. Now we are not angry with anybody at this moment. Now we have no jealousy. We are not greedy now. Because the situation is normal here. But circumstances can change your mind within a few seconds. Then you become very greedy, you become very jealous, and you lose your temper, you get very angry. Now you are keeping them under control. It is not that you are very good. You are not very good people. Remember that, you have to admit that. Because you have those poisonous thoughts in your mind. And need time can irritate and provoke and disturb you. You can behave like tigers. Now this is the danger, uncertainty of human mind. So, that temptation which arose in the mind, then went on developing, developing one after the other. Then all the other evil forces, mental defilements, impurities, then jealousy, anger, cruelty, fighting, killing, robbing, everything started slowly, one after the other. It started from craving. Now that is why the Buddha always take craving as the origin. And this craving is not given by another person, not created by another person due to our previous experience. So living beings always exist in this universe. The world system always exists. When one world section completely disappear, then so many other world systems exist. When living beings completely disappear from one part of the world system, the living, same living beings also again rebirth take place in other existing world system. So the whole universe never become empty, appear and disappear. This is the nature of life. So what is happening today? What is the nature of our way of life? Why people are not happy? Why we are very sad? Why there is some sort of fear? What is the cause? We feel that our life also uncertain, no security. Whatever we earn by working so hard, there is no guarantee, there is no security. Any moment we lose what we have. See the situation? Why? But do you think all these disturbances come to us from devil or ghost? Have you ever seen any devil or ghost come and take away anything from your house? Today, I have read in the newspaper, eleven year old girl was caught for robbing. Can you imagine? The way of life of girls. Now, Girls, gangsters are spreading. Drug addicts and gangsters, girls, they carry knife and pistol. Also. Have you heard this kind of thing about 50 to 100 years ago? 
girls behaved like this. Girls were born to this world to fulfill a mission. What is their mission? With motherly feeling, tender heart and body, so soft, to carry babies, to attend to babies. That is the first duty of a woman, otherwise no point of appearing in this world, their appearance. They have not born to this world to carry guns and fight in the battlefield. And what is happening today? Women are in the battlefield by carrying machine guns. What sort of motherly heart they have to use this machine gun to kill other human beings? See how far we have polluted and spoiled women to be so cruel. This is the nature of the world today. Of course, world means human being. The main cause of all these problems is neither God or devil or anybody, our own craving. Craving is the main cause. Craving creates selfishness. That selfishness creates discrimination hostility, then ill-treat, disturb, craving is the main cause. <coughs> so if we are facing so many problems today, the main cause of all our problems is human craving. The craving that maintained by the human beings. Animals also have this craving, but their craving is only for their survival or little bit of pleasure. They never go beyond that. But we think we are cultured, civilized, religious, educated. But when we analyze unbiasedly, compare with animals' way of life, actually we are worse than animals. Animals are not cunning. They are very honest. And animals are not so selfish like human beings. They disturb others when they want to find out some food. That's all. What about us? We do not disturb others for our living, for our survival. We have enough food to eat. We have our own clothing. There is no difficulty for us to find out clothing. We have some sort of shelter for us to sleep. Then why do we fight? Why do we disturb others? That craving we developed in the mind to have more pleasure, enjoy. Then there is another group in the society Organize so many things in such a way to create temptation in your mind. Most of them are advertisers. All those advertising firms, you must go and burn all those advertising firms. They are the ones who spoil the whole country. Create temptation. When they see these things, if they haven't got money, ah, they go and rob to enjoy. I have visited some uh, socialist countries like Russia, Mongolia, uh, 
there I notice one thing they do not practice this advertising business you cannot see advertisement there if anybody want to buy something must go and buy that's all in the shop also they don't keep things to create temptation if you want to buy something right you go and buy they never give any nice piece of paper to wrap the thing that you buy may cost about 10 cents the piece of paper they used to wrap may cost 20 cents to create temptation so everything we organize in our society to create temptation our clothing the main purpose of using our clothing is to cover nakedness that's all what else but today people don't want to cover their nakedness but cover somewhere else with flowery beautiful thing they have forgotten the purpose of wearing clothes see how we have changed our way of life now you can understand why the buddha says craving is the main cause of all our problems and worries don't blame devil so charms and black magic <coughs> that day i told you when the rulers kings ministers officials in the government various departments when they are righteous kind and understanding dutiful then the subject rank the file all the others also follow their masters and the rulers when you study human history we can understand this when they are corrupted the rulers and the ministers and all the others up to the last one of his boy then the whole country follow that cunning selfish and wrong attitude then who is going to correct nobody one blame the other so the buddha's interpretation is <clears throat> the rulers are honest and kind and understand if they do not discriminate according to their religion or caste or, uh, or race or nationality then justice and peace exist if rulers are not fulfilling their duties it is impossible to maintain peace and justice and order ah uh, this is one of the reason why deterioration declining started in every country the country that we are living is actually not that bad when you compare with so many other countries where cruelty selfishness injustice a very very common we have minor incident here which we cannot satisfy but still we can lead peaceful life we can find out our food and clothing and shelter and medicines and living but in many other countries people are dying starving because of these problems and difficulties how they kill each other every day how they burn and destroy every day so in that respect i maintain still this is a very good country although some people are preparing to run away from this country after going there then they start to grumble there oh we never knew malaysia is still better than this many people who have left the country now planning thinking how to come back ah uh, this is another advice given by the buddha 
when people disturbed the Buddha and his disciple. The disciple suggested to go away from that town. Then the Buddha asked, why? People are scolding, insulting, accusing us. We can go to another country or another town. Then the Buddha says, yes. What guarantee is there that people never disturb us in that new place? Can you say there, there won't be any trouble in the new place? Uh, there is, but then, then we'll go to another place. All right. We can go from place to place to avoid this disturbance. Do you think that we can see the end of our troubles and problems and difficulties? No. Ah, in that case, running away from that place is not the solution. We have to adjust ourselves. If we are not wrong, if we are innocent, we must know how to adjust ourselves according to the circumstances. Then we can overcome our problems. Uh, this is the Buddha's attitude. Later, when this situation, uncertainty, honesty is no more in the mind, understanding and kindness slowly fading away, at the beginning we had, you know in his teaching, the Buddha says, Pabhasara midam bhikkave chittam tanchako agantuke upakkile sehi upakkilinta. When we remove all these objects that we take from outside by using our senses and the mental imagination, when we stop, Our mind become very pure, very luminous force. That means, at the beginning, our minds are very pure, very bright. Then what happened? By using all the five senses and the imagination, we started to pollute the purity of our mind. And then develop all these cravings and anger and jealousy and grudge and enmity and all these things appear because of one of these objects. Eyes bring certain objects, ears bring certain objects, nose, mouth, body, some other object. If not, mind itself bring objects then disturb the purity of the mind. So meditation means the dirt that we have accumulated in the mind for a long period, trying to cleanse the mind, wipe out these dirt from the mind. But it will take long time for us to clean, it's completely dirty in the mind. That is why it is very difficult. So when the dirts were removed from the mind, that mental energy become a very strong, very dynamic force. Now we have no mental energy wasted. Ninety percent of our mental energy we have wasted for unnecessary things. So when we remove those dirts, again you can see the brightness. For you to understand easily, I can give an example. When the gold is mixed up with certain other metals, any kind of metals, 
you cannot see the brightness. No shining gold there. Mix up with other metals, iron and tin and brass, copper. When you melt this piece, you can see the brightness there when the gold is separated from the other element. Again, brightness can be seen. So you can take out the gold and shining gold can be seen. So in the same manner, through understanding, realization or meditation, when we remove all these dirts that you have applied to dirty your mind, again mind becomes pure and very bright. And that is the other end. Attainment of sainthood, arahantahood or the buddhahood, that means complete purifications of that mind, just like piece of gold that we have separated from the and other metals. It is not impossible, but we are used to this way of life, to mix up with so many other things. That is why we experience a lot of bad or bitter taste in our life. So if you are not happy, the main cause of our unhappiness is our own craving. Then, the Buddha has given another reason. When cunningness and craving both developed in our mind at the beginning, people started to steal, robbing, stealing, bluffing, swindling others. Earlier they never had them. Now many of those animals do not know how to steal things, because that cunningness is not in their mind. So at the beginning our human minds also were very innocent. We have never learned how to rob others, to steal others' things. Today, I think even two years or three years old child also knows how to steal things. It has become so common. So when people started to steal, take away others' things without their permission, that is called stealing. The righteous kings, rulers, they, are, they were very honest. They wanted to find out why these people want to steal others' things. Then, according to his investigation, he found out, earlier they started to steal because they were very poor. They won't get enough things requisite for their living. That is why they started to steal. Now this was his discovery. Then what he did? He has given order to provide enough materials for their living to stop robbing. Still, now it is not necessary for them to stay. They cannot say, when they were caught, they cannot say, we did that because we won't get enough food, enough clothing. Later, what happened? More and more people started to steal. Why? They heard, when we steal, 
the kings give us more. A spread all over the country. Everybody started to steal. It is happening today. Everybody is stealing today, all of us. You cannot say no. I cannot say no. Up to certain degrees. That cunningness is in our mind. We are not free from that cunningness and selfishness. We steal something. That is our intrinsic feeling in our life. To get rid of that, take a lot of understanding and determination to develop that honesty. Then, after realizing this, that his method is wrong, the king wanted to change his attitude. So what he did, all right, in future I am not going to supply anything for those who steal others' things. And then he introduced enforce punishment. Before that there was no such thing as punishment. The king says, if anybody is steal, cut his hand, cut his neck. He has given this order. When he gave this order, what happened? Those who wanted to steal also developed and produced weapon for their protection. Formerly they never used any weapon, either knife, or dagger, or guns, or sword, nothing. Because of that order, when others come to catch them, are they attack them. So for their protection, they have discovered and prepared weapon. Today, in certain countries, I heard that each and every person is entitled to carry a pistol. But a country like Malaysia, it's very hard to get permit to keep a pistol or gun for your protection. But some other countries, just like, it's very common. Everybody is keeping it. And when they wanted to rob somebody on the way, some of them do not threaten. First, he shoot the man. After shooting, try to find out whether they got anything, with the money or any valuable thing. But here in this country, people never shoot at the beginning, isn't it? They must use the dagger at the beginning. If there is a battle or shouting and this and that, and then only they do that. I see the difference now. So this cruelty, selfishness and uh, evil forces are so advanced in their mind, they, no kindness, pity, compassion, understanding at all in their human mind. At once they shoot and find out whether there is anything. If there is nothing, just kick and go in. There are many. A small children, I heard, in the same country, how they play with dogs and cats. If an innocent or stray dog or cat, they happen to meet 
the roadside or sleeping somewhere. What they do, they carry some petrol or fuel and pour and set fire. To see how this poor animal go round and round and round and do it like this, to enjoy their life. That is their hobby. So that human feeling, human qualities, human virtues are completely gone, no more in that human mind. Animals never do this kind of thing. They kill another living being when they are hungry. They do not go on killing every living being. See how dangerous and how wicked we human beings are. So how can we say we are more cultured? The knowledge and education that we had, we abused and misused to satisfy our selfishness. Take another example, modern development, science and technology. When they hijack an aeroplane, what sort of atrocity and cruelty that they harbor in their mind to kill those innocent passengers and torture them. They are innocent people, children, women. For what purpose? Can you imagine that they are human beings? Now this is the situation today. Do you think that there is a method that we can stop all these things? Impossible. No one can stop. In time to come, say another fifty years or hundred years time, you can see. Human beings may kneel down and worship animals. They, they are more holy. They are more virtuous. But these human beings are so cruel and wicked and dangerous and unreliable. This situation. Well, we say we were created by God and we pray to God asking to, make, to correct us, adjust us, to adjust one or two screw here. No answer. You can pray hundred times a day, but nobody to correct us, to stop all this cruelty and dangerous and atrocity. The more they pray, after praying they go and torture and slaughter and develop more enmity, jealousy, anger towards others. That is the main purpose of their prayers. Is that the purpose of a religion? They have abused religion. They misuse religion for their own benefit to satisfy their selfishness. And listen how the Buddha explain all these things. This situation. No one can stop all these things. Now you can remember how we have started and what is the main cause of all these problems? And now how these things are developing, developing, spreading in various ways. Oh, now robbers, thieves, have discovered dangerous weapons for their own protection. You can see every time, every day when you read the newspaper, when they attack jewelry shop, banks and various other places, how they shoot others and how police and security guard kill them and how they kill security guard. 
What is, where is the cause? Craving. Then, by using force, using their dangerous weapon, threatening, frightening others, take away your valuable thing. Yesterday our old man who is in the temple went to railway station to buy a ticket for a monk. When he was waiting for a bus, two people came and asked something or cock and bull story and one person suddenly, he had a gold chain here, suddenly and they finished. Old man, lucky he did not die. No one can escape. Human beings. So they use these weapons. It is very common to take away others' things by force. Then they started to kill each other. They tried to kill you and you tried to kill them. You attack them and they attack you. So the life of the living is uncertain. On the way also there is no guarantee that you are completely safe. Even after reaching home also there is no guarantee. You have so many Doors, iron gate, padlocks. How many are there? Burglar alarms and certain houses, television also at the gate to see who is near the gate. You can see here inside your house. Why? See where the devils are trying to <laughs> enter into the house. All these are the acts of human beings. Then, why other living beings are not that clever like us? They are not very clever. Two things are missing in them. We are very advanced in that respect. Cunningness and selfishness. These two things are very, very advanced in our mind. Everything, whatever we do, there is some sort of selfishness in behind. Otherwise we never do anything. In the name of service, in the name of religion, we do certain things. There is some sort of selfish motives behind. Then adapt some sort of cunning method which others cannot understand. This cunningness you cannot find in other living beings. More powerful devas, brahmas, maharas and other living beings, they do not know what is cunningness. There is no such thing in their mind. They are very honest. Then what is this cunningness? Let us define. It is very interesting. How did we get this cunningness or crookedness? Who taught us? Given by God or devil? Why we cannot trust each other? Can I trust you? Can you trust me? But we pretend we are very good, we are religious, we are cultured, but no one can understand what is inside our mind, what is the motive.
Because others know how to block you. You become their victims. Then what do you do? Later you also adapt their attitude. You also become very cunning, very selfish. And this is the uncertainty of our life. Although we try to be good, others come and spoil us. If our minds are not strong enough to face the challenge, very easily we will become their victims and we follow them. So we cannot trust each other. We work together as good friends, many years, fifty to sixty years, associate as very good friend, but sometimes can bluff each other or disappear. Now this is the nature of human mind, that honesty is not strong. Uh, then, because of this attitude, uh, this is another turning point. First we develop craving, craving develops selfishness, selfishness develops anger and disturb others, attack each other. When this human mind is polluted up to that extent. The features, complexion, health, longevity, serenity start to fade away. It is true. Before we develop all these evil forces in our mind, we had good complexion, features, and serenity and what you call very appealing to our appearance to each other. When we look at the face, we can understand up to a certain extent the nature of the mind. The face is the mirror for us to see the reflection of the mind. There is an indication given in one of the Sanskrit uh, book. He says, Akarai ingitai gatya cheshtaya bhasane cha Netra Vaktra Vikarena Lakshate Antargatan Mana. How to see the nature of the mind? By watching the face, can understand who this person is. The way how this person moves, go here and there and how he handled things and watch carefully. Then Ingita, the way how he used his eyes, lips, hands, watch carefully. How he look at things, watch very carefully, indicate the nature of the mind, what this person is up to. Akara ingita. Then Bhasana nature, how he talk, what he talk, what sort of word he use, tone. Observe very carefully how he talk. The way of talking, you know, when you observe, you can see a lot of differences. You can understand what this person is trying to do or what he wants. Then how he walk, 
how he walk watch very carefully how he sit down how he get up we see some people are very impatient some are very calm indicate the nature of the mind by watching all these thing then you can guess so this person is like this he is up to this he is planning to to do this he need this even then not accurate not accurate still cannot understand the real nature of the human because mind is going on changing 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 very rapidly human mind we can change our mind at any time that is why we cannot trust today you decide not to do certain thing you promise after few days time you violate it you do that because circumstances change the mind uncertainty of our mind we can train all the other living beings in this world we can train animals those fierce animal tigers lions or the monkeys we can train they become very obedient after training but i cannot train my own mind i cannot train your mind this is the nature of the mind is a very big battle so the meditation means the method that we have adapted to tame or to train that mind yes during the time that we try to train yes mind is very sober very calm very obedient when you stop all these things all the dark clouds again come and occupy the mind then no controlling power i have noticed all those meditators when they are in those meditation centers yes yeah, very nice very good when they come back <laughs> as you should no changes at all it's not at all but those animals after training here for a long time if you release them in the jungle they get into trouble other animals come and attack them because they are not ready to accept them i heard a peculiar incident <coughs> many years ago there was an american monk in pinak river sumangalo actually he was the father of this uh, buddhist youth uh, circles and sunday schools here in this country he used his full effort so someone has given him a very tamed monkey the pinak buddhist association so he has been keeping this and every sunday a lot of children come to attend sunday school those children go and disturb this monk very difficult to stop so he decided to release this monk you know in the penang hill there are a lot of monkeys so he carried this monk in the penang hill and just released he told me within few minutes one big gang of other monkeys 
come when all this monkey into pieces could not find out even a single bones of this monkey. All this happened. They are into pieces. Why? Monkeys knew. This monkey is associated with human beings. Human beings are the most dangerous living beings. This monkey has learned all the human monkey tricks. So they are not ready to accept this monkey and kill it on the spot. They never accept. Any living being associated with human being, others never accept. See how dangerous we are. Animals also never trust us. <coughs> so, now we are spending so much money today for cosmetic eh, and what do you call facial, what do you, what do you call it? Uh, how much they spend to beautify. But without spending single cent, you can beautify yourself. If you can develop your kindness, your honesty, your sympathy, your understanding. If these qualities are there, everybody look at you with confidence, with love. They extend their love and understanding. <laughs> Real beauty is there. A group of ladies one day approached the Buddha and asked this question. Why some ladies are very pretty by nature? Why some are ugly? Then the Buddha says, yes. Those who have developed their cruelty, anger, jealousy, grudge and enmity during their previous birth, those evil forces molded this life to be very ugly. It is true. Not necessary for us to investigate about the previous births. When you are angry, when you are jealous, at that time look at the features, complexion, eyes and everything, completely distorted. Your beauty completely disappears when you develop your anger, your jealousy in your mind. See how it is true. On the other hand, those who have cultivated their kindness and compassion towards others, radiated their kindness and friendliness and goodwill towards others, that healthy mind mold a pretty and handsome physical appearance. Because the mind is responsible for our physical body as well as the mind. The mind molds it. If we are ugly, that means the nature of our mind during our previous birth indicates what we have developed during our previous birth. So here, what the Buddha says, because of those evil forces, they developed in their mind, then started ugliness and they have lost their serenity, good complexions and features and ugly looking appearance, horrible looking appearance started. It. Now when you look at very carefully. We feel at 
tell you something is missing, something is wrong. Either you are sad or thinking very deeply or could not satisfy with your life, could not gain what you wanted, something is wrong somewhere. And that feeling in your mind indicates your appearance, your face. On the other hand, when the mind is free from such disturbances, you can see the cheerfulness, serenity, very pleasing appearance, because there's nothing to bother, disturb the mind. Mind indicates, reflects the nature. Uh, that is what the Buddha says. Immoral, evil, wicked practices are the causes of ugliness of our appearance. And continue. So today I have explained up to number eight. There are thirty-one points here the Buddha has given. How these things slowly, slowly, slowly start to deteriorate. Then again, how started to develop up to the maximum limit. Uh, this is the nature of our ups and downs, ups and downs. Forever it is like that. No one can stop this. But those who can understand this situation, through their understanding, try to apply the brake to stop certain evil and wicked and harmful things. But others cannot apply the break until they get into trouble. Remember, number eight completed, because next Friday I won't be able to remember the number. <laughs> so, number eight completed. Yes? So next Friday we start from number nine. This, the name of this discourse is Mahasihanada Sutra the Buddha's lion's roar in Dīgha Nikāya, Sūtra Pitaka. Uh, 